Hello there and welcome back to Technical Service 101 channel and this is the promised LED unit revamp shortened version uh, just for those of you with the attention spans of goldfish you've got full detailed step by step already available you can refer to those, those in my video list okay so we'll be uh, converting a spider cob six cob monochromatic red and blue and we're going to be replacing its monochromatic red and blue um, mixed cobs with uh, full white spectrum Luxian Gen 3 1211s at uh, 80 CRI and uh, around about 120 milliamps drive current, 36 volts. Okay, I've been uh, slightly inaccurate in referring to this to, as a Budmaster style knockoff. Uh, I've been uh, corrected, and apparently it's a spider <laughs> Chinese knockoff. So here's the original unit, and it's resplendent magenta. Uh, as you can see, we've got six individual heat sinks mounted to a steel frame with six individual power supplies. Each one of those power supplies is rated at 72 to 90 volts at 650 milliamps. Uh, they also have a center tap with a 12 volt supply for the, uh, the cooling fans. So there's the original unit in its... Uh, in all its glory, uh, hardly the uh, most dazzling of objects in the in the universe. And as you can see there, my camera is not having a struggle to uh, maintain iris with that even pointed straight at the the camera. So these are the Luxians. This is the first of the uh, sort of pre-conversions that we were doing as a test. Yeah, we were attaching that to a variable power supply, so that was me just turning it up to uh, uh, drive current, and you saw the camera immediately, uh, yeah, camera doesn't like that, <laughs> yeah, oh look, it's gone all dark. Okay, so here's the actual engineering problem, the cob holders that we're using are two uh, bolt hole uh, cob holders, the original cobs were uh, just simply uh, screwed straight to the heatsink by four corner screws. Okay, and here's the uh, the sort of internal wiring layout. We've got six separate power supplies. Uh, we've got the uh, mains coming in to two block connectors, uh, one blue block connector, one brown block connector there, and then heading off as pairs of wires to each of the individual power supplies. And those DC cables, as they come out of the power supplies, terminate in a male and a female ended wire. As you can see there, the female ended wire on the power supply is for the uh, cooling fan and the male ended one is for the 72 volts for the cob. So this is just the bulb holder held down by a bit of heat seat schmoo. I suppose that does serve a, a dual purpose job in, in the original fitment where it probably acts to keep some condensation out of the cob. And it's a bit of a fiddly little job, just uh, unscrewing all the cobs, carefully prising them off the heat sink. I'm not really worried about damaging the cob but I am uh, concerned about their uh, any damage to the heat sink we want a nice flush flat surface smooth flat surface to accept the heat sink and uh, yeah follow that in the bin fans are simply held down by a screw up two diagonal corners And as you can see, the fan is uh, quite clearly visibly sided. You have the bracket at the back and the, uh, the exposed fan at the front. Just gently clean the schmoo off. Won't be using that again. Comes off quite clean. But we like things nice and clean. Even cleaner. An air duster would have been handy on that. 
Okay, so here's the old cob unit retrieved out of the bin. <laughs> As you can see, it's got four holes. Our replacement has got two. And although the spacing is the same of the uh, four holes on the cob because they're at the four corners, the uh, new cob won't line up with the centre of the heat sink if we use either of the four. So what we've had to do here is make a steel adapter plate with the larger holes for the corners and the smaller holes for the cob. That's using a 2.5mm metric high speed steel drill bit to drill the smaller holes and a three and a half for the clearance for the corners. And there you can see the sort of comparative size of the two drill bits. Then we just simply mount that from the corner screw holes of the old cob. And then we use the smaller holes that are left open to ensure an absolute precision hole placement for the through drilling that we're going to do for the tapping and dying. So here's the cob after drilling, drilled on a pillar drill. You could do it with a hand drill, but I've got a pillar drill, so not to be precise. And then we have to tap these holes with a uh, M3 thread. Tapping is a fairly uh, straightforward process, just simply as you can see, a hand uh, tap holder there to hold the tap, and you just advance it gently into the hole and uh, uh, turn and return to break the chips off inside the hole. Tap all the way through with both the first taper and the plug, so that you make sure that you've got a thread all the way through of a, of a suitable quality. And this is just test mounting one of the holders to ensure that the hole spacings were correct. And just to show you how little play there is on those holes, you really don't get a lot of wiggle room. Hence the reason for the template. Uh, making sure that there's no burrs or uh, uh, swarf left on the edge. A little clean of the uh, heat zinc face. And these are our Luxian Gen 3 1211s. They are uh, 80 CRI. Uh, we're using a 4000 Kelvin and a 3500 Kelvin and as you can see the cob holders are clearly marked for positive and negative and the cob faces are also marked for positive and negative but also just for idiot proofing you'll notice on the cob holder there there's a little black square and there's a little square marking on the back of the cob too. Line the two squares up click them together. Now, I've seen a lot of um, uh, discussion about sort of how to apply heat paste. This particular pattern is known as the uh, percentage mark and it's favoured by all the um, computer hot rod boys. I've seen a lot of uh, analysis done of various uh, patterns of applying thermal grease and that is the one that performs best in all the lab tests. It ensures the most even coverage. And you just slide it down on the, the screws and bed it down. That's what spreads out that percentage mark into a full coverage. Bit of a, um, you know I mean, if you've never applied heat, heat sink paste before, it might be worth, you know what I mean, applying some and then removing that cob and cleaning it off and looking how um, complete the contact area was because essentially you want a complete, very thin contact area between the two. Okay, and there's your two part numbers. Stripping back the wires. These cob holders are push fit for the wires and you simply have to strip uh, eight to uh, 10 mil clear wire. And then the positives and negatives are marked on the face of the cob holder so you know which way to put the wires in. I'm going blue wire to negative and brown wire to positive in this build. I should really have got some uh, red and black wire for the 12 volt. So you get your pokey bit and you poke it in your hole. Give it a little tug to make sure that it's uh, been caught by the clip and ensure that you don't have any strands of wire showing or any bare copper past the hole. 
on the insulator of the wire to be tucked nice and butted nice and neatly up inside that hole and then you need to lay the wires out of the way because the because the rings for the uh, lens holders are quite a tight clearance on that cob holder and this is just simply the uh, reinstallation procedure putting the heat sinks back in And there uh, you can see that we have the two 4Ks in diagonally opposite corners and the four 3.5Ks spaced in a sort of L shape. And there's one of those uh, block connectors that we saw earlier. And that's it removed. Simply uh, latch lock. Just push bare wires into them and close the lock. Make sure that the insulator is butted right up. And so we need to cut the 72 volt ends off and join two of the power supplies together in parallel so we have two 650 watt 72 volt power supplies there connected in parallel so we now have effectively one power supply 72 volts at uh, 1300 milliamps now what we're doing here is we're wiring the uh, right hand side cob positive to the red wire on that pair and the left side negative to the uh, uh, negative side of that pair and then we connect the remaining positive and negatives left on the cobs one to the other so we daisy chain the two cobs together and geez that thing's bright Having done the uh, maths on our cobs, all told, we appear to be overdriving our cobs by about three to five percent, perhaps, on their, their rated uh, 1200 milliamps. But they will take their, they're taking an awful lot more than that. So we're certainly not uh, pushing them to any sort of extreme there. A few percent extra. Uh, we don't seem to have paid any penalty in uh, luminous efficiency for that either. The efficiencies don't really drop off greatly on these cobs until you really hit their sort of threshold temperatures and amperages. So. so carefully replacing the uh, lenses, rings and reflectors. And there you can see that it's really pulled the light into a much more focused pattern. The camera's really not struggling so much with it laid on its back there. And it's only once I point it. Yeah, I couldn't actually point it at the camera because the camera was struggling. There. As you can see, these lenses aren't the best, um, aren't in the best quality, in the best condition. But it doesn't really seem to have made a great deal of difference. And proof of the pudding is in the eating. There's seven hundred and thirty thousand lux at a meter. And this is uh, in a more restricted environment where it's actually collecting a bit more light. And as we get up to about two feet away from the, yeah, <laughs> 200,000 lux at, there you go, approximately two feet away from the light. Get a good light. And so this is the before. Meh. Yeah. And, yeah, very lovely. All very nice. Much better. <laughs> Now, I know you uh, monochrome boys are going to uh, be telling me that uh, lumens are, are for humans, but yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see what we shall see. Certainly initial results from these uh, have proven to be incredibly successful. Okay, so thanks for watching this uh, slightly abbreviated version. If you want more details on this particular build, you can go to the other two vids where literally I've covered this blow by blow in uh, painfully drawn out detail thanks for watching and uh, wait for the next vid
coming soon.